recent conversation about teaching and learning, my friend turned to me and asked me, is there a set of principles that have been tested and proven to work in the classroom, irrespective of context? My reply was a simple yes. It's intrigued me as to why many teachers aren't aware of these principles. This video series is designed to provide a short summary of what these principles are and how they can be implemented in the classroom so you can be successful as a teacher. Remember that they are only summaries and the real value comes in implementing them in your own classroom time and time again, perfecting them, failing along the way, of course, and hopefully arriving at mastery. I hope you find this series useful. Teaching Principle 5 Sharing Learning Intentions and Success Criteria Consider learning intentions or objectives as your learning GPS. It acts as that touch point to guide and direct the learning towards an endpoint. Imagine setting out on a journey. Instead of aimlessly drifting and stumbling towards somewhere, your destination is firmly fixed in your mind and you know exactly where you are going. It also helps to share these objectives and intentions with the pupils so they are crystal clear of what is expected of them and what the focus of the lesson is. We're going to look at some poor practice versus good practice in establishing and setting learning intentions or objectives. A first example. I once observed a history lesson and saw this as an objective to create a poster about World War II. And I'm sure that was a fun exercise that was pretty enjoyable for the students. But that's a task-based objective and it does not make the learning explicit. What would be better is something that's more rigorous, such as to understand the causes which led to World War II. This is what we will call a smart objective or intention. It's specific, it's measurable, it's achievable, it's relevant, and it's time-centered. Once the learning intentions and objectives have been firmly set, it's to be broken down in success criteria. Consider it like a recipe. You're trying to make spaghetti bolognese. That's your destination, that's your end point. But that doesn't tell you how to get there. That's what the success criteria is. You would expect to find in the recipe or the success criteria to boil the pasta and spaghetti for a certain amount of time or to make a rich tomato sauce would require certain ingredients and a certain methodology. This is what the success criteria does. It clearly breaks down those steps towards getting to that final outcome and intention. So, Taking the objective to understand the causes which led to World War II, which is your destination. Part of the success criteria might be select at least two relevant pieces of information about the causes of World War II. We would expect a teacher to maybe share some source material or some background reading about World War II and model how to extract relevant information from the irrelevant pieces and then have students engage in deliberate practice of selecting and retrieving pieces of information. Success criteria can also get progressively harder. You might move on to something such as write a summary of the causes of World War II where students now pull all of their pieces of information together and create a cohesive paragraph or set of paragraphs about the causes of World War II. For students who require more challenge, you could have something such as decide which of the causes of World War II could have been avoided. You're starting to stretch pupils' thinking so that they're now thinking critically and they're using their reasoning skills and skills of judgment. It will be completely up to the teacher to decide on what success would be for that particular lesson 
and for their particular pupils. So, I would like you to try practicing developing rigorous learning intentions and success criteria with just one class for the next 30 days and see what impact it has. Good luck. <laughs>